All right, hey, what's up everyone? It's me, Narada African Hair God. This is take two of me doing this video and hopefully this one isn't 20 minutes long, but it's all right because it's gotta get done. I am here to give an update on my dyshydrotic eczema. Um, so for those of y'all that have been following me, following me for the past year, you know that I've been dealing with um, this new condition of dyshydrotic eczema. It first popped up a year ago exactly this month, January of 2020. Um, that's when I was first diagnosed, and I've been dealing with this ever since, and I haven't had any relief from my hands experiencing eczema, blisters, itching at all throughout this whole 12 months. But that's okay, because in the course of those 12 months, I've learned how to keep my eczema under control, even with the blisters that sometimes do form on my fingers and palms of my hands. So I'm going to share um, some of my tips that just help keep my hands under control with my dyshydrotic eczema. Um, so let me go ahead and read what the eczema is. For those of y'all that are unfamiliar with it, um, I do have a couple of videos that go into further detail about my eczema, what it is, what it looks like, my experience with it, pictures, video footage, all of that. I'll link that in the comment section below and in the description, okay? So, dyshydrotic eczema or dyshydrosis is a skin condition in which blisters develop on the soles of your feet and or the palms of your hands. The blisters are usually itchy and may be filled with fluid. Blisters normally last for about two to four weeks and may be related to seasonal allergies or stress. Two to four weeks, my ass. Um, what causes dyshydrotic eczema? The exact cause of dyshydrotic eczema is unknown. Experts believe the condition may be related to seasonal allergies such as hay fever. So blisters may erupt more frequently during the spring allergy season. Who is at risk for developing dyshydrotic eczema? Doctors believe that you have a greater chance of developing the condition if you're experiencing a high level of stress, either physical or emotional, or have allergies. Some doctors think that dyshydrotic eczema may be a type of allergic reaction. You may be more likely to develop dyshydrotic eczema if your hands and feet are often moist or in water, or if your work exposes you to metal salts such as cobalt, chromium, and nickel. Um, if you have dyshydrotic eczema, you'll notice blisters forming on your fingers, toes, hands, or feet. The blisters may be more common on the edges of these areas and will probably be full of fluid. Sometimes large blisters will form, which can be particularly painful. The blisters will usually be very itchy and may cause your skin to flake. The affected areas may become cracked or painful to the touch. The blisters may last up to three weeks before they begin to dry. As the blisters dry up, they'll turn into skin cracks that may be painful. If you've been scratching the affected areas, you may also notice that your skin seems thicker or feels spongy. All right, so that is dyshydrotic eczema. Now, before we go any further into this video, if you have not personally dealt with this condition or know someone that has personally dealt with this condition, Please do not offer your suggestions for people like myself on how we should go about dealing with this condition. I realize that your intentions might be in the right place, but in actuality, it kind of just makes things more difficult for people like myself who come to videos like this seeking um, solutions to their problems or just to help you know, mitigate their issues when you have a bunch of comments from people that don't know anything about this eczema and trying to tell you how to go about dealing with it. It's just, it's really confusing and it just adds noise and people have to sift through all the like stuff that's not legitimate to find solutions to their problems. So just don't do it. I appreciate it, but no, thank you. Um, I've done everything from using the eczema lotions, rubbing aloe vera gel and aloe vera juice on my hands, soaking my hands in oatmeal, um, using the steroid creams, wearing gloves. Uh, what else have people suggested? Using shea butter and using uh, eczema ointments and all natural butters and soaps. It's like I've done everything. And I don't mean to sound jaded about it, but it's literally, I've done it all. So like your suggestion, I probably done it. 
because it's just been that long with me dealing with this and I've tried everything. I've gotten allergy tests. Um, they didn't provide any answers to my situation. Um, I've gone to dermatologists. I went to a couple of them. Both of them, they just didn't really have any answers for me. And they just kept throwing medications at me. And I just was like, y'all not fixing the problem. Y'all not helping it. Y'all just keep throwing medicine. And y'all talking about me taking shots and shit. I'm just like, nah. Like, I, I need, I need, I need relief, but not like this. So, um, yeah. Let's go into what has been working for me to help me keep my hands under control. So, first of which, when I go out and about, I always take my little baggie here, and it contains my essentials for going out in public. So, before I even get into that, just for people who are dealing with um, this condition, I know when you first experience it and you are first dealing with it, it is very depressing. It is very embarrassing. It is very emotional. It is very um, frustrating. It is very scary um, because you have more questions than answers. You don't know what's happening to your hands. You don't know if your hands are ever going to look like normal again. You don't know if you're ever going to be able to flex that finger again because it's so swollen and so split and so dry. Um, you don't know... Like, it, it's so many questions and so little answers with this condition. But I'm just here to say it does get better with time. You just have to learn your your condition, learn your eczema, learn your do's, learn your don'ts, and you'll be able to go through life and cope and deal with it. You'll just have to make certain lifestyle changes like I've done, and it won't be as bad. Now, the worst thing for me is that my condition has caused me to um, give up my my love and my passion and my career um, with doing hair. So I I literally had to walk away from my business, doing hair completely. Um, and I've invested so much time and money, seven years in business. Luckily, um, my co-partner, my co-owner, um, she's still running the business and maybe someday down the line, when I get my hands together, I'm able to get back into the salon. However, the way it's looking right now, I don't really see that happening um, anytime soon. So it's unfortunate and it was depressing for me at first, but um, you just learn to deal with it and roll with the punches. That's life. So, all right. So back to my bag of essentials. When I go out and about, you got to have the necessary stuff. First of which, a bar of soap. Now, I know what you're thinking. Um, Why would you need soap going out in public? Like, don't the public restrooms provide soap? Yes, they do. They provide soap. They provide hand sanitizer. They provide, they usually provide all of these things because they're required to. However, anyone with this condition knows that when you go out in public and you go to these public restrooms and you use these soaps. These soaps can be very harsh. They can be very dry. They can be very fragranted and they can aggravate your hand eczema so badly. Um, it causes your hands to blister up so badly that you're better off not using it. So it's just better to bring your own soap. And I just take with me Dawn, not Dawn, Dove um, soap for sensitive skin and it works for me with no problems. I have tried using eczema soaps in the past, where it's for anti-inflammatory properties, for psoriasis and eczema and this and for that. And it's all natural and it's all formulated and it's great. But I hadn't really noticed a difference from using those or not using those versus using this. So I just use this. It's a cheaper alternative and I can get this on the ground. Um, also... <clears throat> Another cleanser I take along with me is the Aquanil cleanser. Someone sent this to me. Thank you so much. You know who you are. This is a soapless, lipid-free cleanser for sensitive skin. It is fragrance-free as well. Now, this is... If I had to compare this to, like, shampooing hair, this would be, like, a co-wash. Like, so... 
I feel like it says Aquanil provides gentle, complete cleansing of sensitive skin. Aquanil, especially formulated to be free of oils and irritating soaps. Aquanil with this emollient effect provides a skin softening action as it cleanses. Aquanil contains no fats of any type. Directions. Apply a generous amount of Aquanil to wet or dry skin and gently rub. Remove the excess with water, a soft tissue, or cloth. So yes, it's a cleanser, but it's not a very thorough cleanser. It doesn't disinfect. It's not going to kill germs. It's not going to kill bacteria, anything like that. Um, so yeah, which brings me to my next point, hand sanitizer. Unless y'all know of a hand sanitizer that works for y'all and y'all eczema and it doesn't cause you any issues, don't use hand eczema. I, I mean, not hand eczema. Don't use hand sanitizer. I treat hand sanitizer like my body is allergic to it because essentially it is. If I use hand sanitizer on my hands, the alcohol or whatever is in these sanitizers is just too harsh, too drying for my skin. It will aggravate my blisters it will cause it to itch. It will cause it to flare more blisters. It's just a bad situation overall. So I can't even remember the last time I even touched hand sanitizer, which I know sounds really bad and really gross considering, you know, we're in the middle of the epidemic and stuff. But hey, we got to do what we got to do. It's either it's either uh, hand sanitizer and, and, and dry, cracked, bleeding fingers or... Is using soap and just praying for the best. And just washing your hands. Um, so speaking of washing your hands, um, another thing that I do is that I am a bit more strategic about how I go about washing my hands. So typically during the day, normally without the eczema, I would be washing my hands anywhere near, I don't know, 10, 15 times a day just because of my line of work. Now, I cut that back quite a bit, and I try to limit it to between five to ten times a day, because if you don't, all that exposure to water, all that exposure to the soap, well, even though the soap can be gentle cleansing and not irritating, it still can aggravate your condition um, and make it worse. So, I try to limit it as much as possible, and just kind of plan out when I'm washing my hands. I know that sounds really gross, and again... We're in an epidemic where washing your hands and being clean is really, really important and vital to the safety of yourself and others. However, you just got to you gotta move how you got to move. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, what else I got in here? So, after you're done washing your hands and stuff, you got to moisturize. I always, always, always moisturize my skin after I wash my hands never wash your hands and not dry it and not moisturize it after the fact. You're only asking for issues with your eczema. So um, I have here the CeraVe Healing Ointment. I like this. I don't tend to use it as much unless my hands are really, really, really dry because it's a petroleum-based ointment and you can see a little bit of that on the cap there, but it's really thick and it's really, um, I know it says non-greasy feel, but, um, trust me, it gets really greasy. I don't like it, but it's necessary sometimes. I also will use the Neutrogena, Neutrogena, come on, fo focus, why you ain't focusing? All right, y'all see what it is, the Neutrogena Hand Cream. And literally, I like this because the container is really, really small. And you would think that because it's so small, you don't really get much. But it literally just takes a little bit, like that much, for you to moisturize your hand. And even that might be a little too much for me. And it's, it's so moisturizing. Um, it's so gentle. And it doesn't leave any greasy feeling whatsoever. And it just really absorbs into the skin. So, I love that. Uh, what else I got in here? Oh, I got my steroid cream. Now, my steroid cream, my dermatologist recommended or prescribed this one to me. 
And I'm not even going to attempt to jack up the name. So I'm going to just let y'all look at that and interpret that as you may. Now, um, hold up. Okay. So I am prescribed to use this twice a day um, or even just once a day when I'm not experiencing any blisters, which hasn't happened once since... Uh, I've been diagnosed, but who's <laughs> counting? I don't know. Um, I don't like to use steroid creams that much anymore because um, they come with a lot of health risks and they can end up um, thinning out your skin with excessive use. And also they just, um, when I first got prescribed the cream, it was working really, really great, the ointment. Um, it really like cleared up my blisters and my issues with my hands really like instantaneously. And then after a while now, it's almost like it's barely doing anything. And I feel like the ointment does help. I feel like it keeps my blisters from progressing and getting worse, like where it dries out and the skin cracks and splits and flakes and bleeds and stuff. So I definitely think it helps to keep it under control in a sense but outside of that it ain't really doing much to you know stop the blistering but i'll use it on occasion um just when my hands are really really itchy that day or if um if the blistering is just really bad or something so one more thing i got in here is white cotton gloves so these are the equivalent of you getting a shower cap and deep conditioning with a shower cap. So if my hands are really, really dry, really, really itchy, or maybe I need to make sure that my hands really absorb this steroid cream really well, I'll, uh, I'll wash my hands, um, dry my hands, moisturize with the ointments, and then put the gloves on and it just holds those ointments and creams to your hands longer, giving your skin more time to absorb so that it's not rubbing off as you're touching different things. So it just helps to hold everything to your hands and keep your hands hydrated. I also got these gloves in here. Um, a subscriber sent this to me, and this is like, I guess like the gloves they use in like meat packing factories and stuff. Um, where it's like a really long sleeve um, to help keep, you know, moisture and everything out. And the idea is great. The problem is uh, the material is not very durable and it splits and tears really easily. And um, the fit is really loose at the hands. But I don't know. It might come a situation where I, I need to get, you know, my hands deep and dirty and you know what i'm saying so maybe i need to protect it or something so i just i just put it in the bag just in case you never know i have used it to wash hair one time and um it was all right it got kind of messy you know trying to wash hair with it but you know you just make it work all right so that's my little bag of essentials that i go out with on a daily basis um Something I do now is I wear nitrile gloves, industrial nitrile gloves, powder-free and latex-free. I will wear these when I am, let's say, taking a shower and I got to shave my head, which I shave every day. Um, the gloves will just help to reduce my hands from exposure to the shaving cream and excessive um, exposure to the water just from me taking a longer shower for me shaving. Um... And so, yeah, that's what I'll use just to help mitigate that. Um, I will also use the gloves when, um, let's say I'm cleaning up around the house and I got to use Clorox and cleansers and stuff with all the harsh chemicals and fragrances and stuff. And I don't want my skin to be exposed to those sort of things. You should wear gloves anyway. But yeah, that's what I'll um, wear to prevent that from coming in contact with my eczema. Um, just to moisturize at home on a daily basis. I also have the CeraVe healing ointment in the jar form. Very thick and quite a bit of it. I haven't even put a dent in this. Um, 
I really like the set of feel. This is the Pro Rest Restore Derm Eczema Soothing Moisturizer with colloidal um, oatmeal. And I like this because um, out of all the eczema lotions and hand creams and stuff, this one is the most moisturizing I find. It's, it's very, the water content on this is really, really high. And it does have a light emollient kind of greasy film in it, but it's not overpowering. So I think it's really balanced for that. Um, so that's why I like it. I also like the Cetaphil Moisturizing Cream. I'll just open this up, dab some in, um, take a little bit and rub it in. Um, this is really moisturizing as well. Really high water content. A little bit more on the greasy side. So if my hands are a little bit drier than usual, I'll probably go for this instead of this. Okay, so this one just for light moisture, this one for heavy, and this one for heavy duty when your shit just dry and crusty as fuck. Um, outside of that, that is it. I guess I'll show y'all what my hands look like. Um, so this is my left hand. And you can see in the center here, you can see the little skin starting to peel and dry up. You can also see some discoloration in the palm here. Um, that's where a cluster of blisters, come on, focus. I'm trying to get to focus, it doesn't, it doesn't want to. Okay, there we go. That's where a cluster of blisters were forming and they have since dried up and now the skin is repairing itself and healing. You will also notice on the side here, some discoloration here, as well as right in here. Um, those were where deep seated blisters were forming inside my palms. And looking at my hands, you wouldn't even be able to tell that they were forming. Like you literally, literally had to like, really like look and examine it up close to really see it but those have since dried out too and it's healing and even during the healing process it can be a little itchy uh, so that's what's going on with my palm here i did get a little bit of a you can't see it but there was a little bit of a split in the skin there um there is blistering on my fingers, and maybe you'll be able to make it out if this can focus. Maybe not. But um, my hands, they're not completely normal looking, but they're normal enough to where if you look at my hands from a distance, you won't be able to see anything wrong with it, and you would think they were fine. So I'm okay with that. As long as I'm not walking around like I was before with my hands is looking crazy. Like that's embarrassing. Like meeting new people and then, you know, they're extending their hand out for a handshake and then you kind of greet them. And then it's, it's, it's awkward. It's, it's awkward. It's embarrassing. And I get it. Um, this hand, kind of the same thing. Not as bad with the palms. Um, some discoloration on the side there, same thing. This one, you should be able to see the blistering on my fingers a bit better. Can you see like the little bumps on my, on my finger there is really, really tiny, but you can you can see them forming underneath, like right underneath the skin. And um, right now the blisters are going down, which is great. But before they um, they were like all over the length of the side of my finger and um, also my other fingers as well. Um, but it's not too bad and it's not too itchy. So I just really work on keeping my hands moisturized. I find that that helps. And, um, what else? That's, that's really it. Um, it's not really much to it. I still have more questions than answers. I still don't know 
if there's anything that's particularly causing this as far as allergies or anything like that i haven't been able to find anything concrete nobody has been able to help me i'm tired of going to doctors and they all give me the same fucking generic um answers on how to deal with this like uh, it's just it's frustrating but um like i said you can go through life and you know have have this hand eczema and it not take over you know i definitely had to adjust quite a few things about how i'm moving through life but um i haven't let it consume me you know so i hope that helps um i just want to give you all an update on what's going on my hands are doing better but it's only because i'm not doing hair so i don't know we'll see what happens hopefully this year um we'll get some better news as far as my uh dishydrotic eczema goes thank you so much for watching and until the next video be blessed bye